I am the Fury. The flames of my rage will incinerate you. I came back from space. As I returned, I had one vision. The world set ablaze. And do you know what I saw there? Fury! A great and terrible fury at being alive. Now, you're going to feel the scorching heat of that horrible blackness. Welcome back, ladies and gents. I'm your host, Center Trainer One. We've got more Metal Gear Solid 3 HD walkthrough. Foxhound Edition. This is the Fury fight. I'm not very good at this fight. This is definitely one of the tougher fights. My suggestions for this is to really, really get learn it, uh, really get better at tactical reloading. Um, but it's just something I'm not very good at. You always got to dodge his attacks. Try to maybe only go in for maybe two. When he goes down into about ready to fly, that's when you want to start hitting him. And then try to rinse and repeat as much as you can. See, unfortunately, I thought he was going to fly instead of actually use his uh, fire. So I screwed that up. Once you hear that little noise rev up, that means he's going to start flying, and you can go ahead and go into uh, that. Unfortunately, he does fall down, which I could have maybe repeated this more and more, but unfortunately he fell, and I couldn't do that. So it's hard for me to come up with a strategy for these boss fights because they're so quick. Uh, if you don't want to catch on fire throughout the level, use the cardboard box. It allows you to move around without actually catching on fire. And then as soon as you have an opportunity, then you can unuse it, uh, maybe get a few hits on him. And that's what I try to do here is I try to get a few hits on him, even though I do take damage during uh, the fire, but immediately take the fire out by putting the cardboard box back on. And then you can rinse and repeat this process. It will take you a little bit of time. If you did the end boss fight, you'll have the Mosin Agant, which is makes this fight a lot easier. But since we did not have it, we have to use this method. So I trust, you know, just follow kind of what I do in this video and try to get them into the same predicaments. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to complete it. Boss. This is the end of the Copras. You've got to live on. You're the only one left. I'm off. To join the shop. Mission Control, do you read me? I'm coming home. I see the Earth. Alright, so here, just don't forget to pick up your Mark 22 bullets as well as the camo that we just got. Fire. Now, if only there was an ice camo in here, huh? It'd be all like Game of Thrones. Excuse me, that's a suppressor, not uh, rounds. And we're going to be heading up to infiltrate Rosniagrad.
So the first thing you want to do is, because we're low on Mark 22 bullets, is pick up some here, if you've been doing it the way that I have. And then we can head. You're pretty much clear to go. Use the box to go a little faster if you need to, especially up and down things. Go the route that I do so that you're not uh, seen. If you have Splitter and Tiger Stripe, you should not get an alert if you hurry up and move to the side here, as well as with these guys. Should be able to easily move to the next section without having to worry too much. Now in the next section, we're only going to have to take out one guard, so go ahead and put your suppressors back on. As we enter the next section, we're going to move directly to the right, and we're going to take this guard, wait a few minutes, and then we should have a clear spot when the other guard turns around in order to be able to complete this. But just move here to the right. Take this guy out. Wait a few seconds, because the guard up ahead, he doesn't see what you just did. As soon as he turns around, go ahead and go, and make a beeline right for the left side of the truck. And you should be able to get around him without him turning around. And we can go ahead and get inside. So my strategy for the inside portion is to hide in the car cardboard box. We need to take out one guard, plus Ivan himself. It's actually not too difficult, if you do it this way. But you do want to use the cardboard box to get up here as quickly as you can. Once this guard is um, past your view, go ahead and CQC him. Hide the body on the other side of the door. And wait for Ivan to come out, and you're going to repeat the same process of CQCing Ivan. Give him a few, a little bit of a lead. All right, and now we just need to drag his body all the way until we get to the cutscene. Very, very easy to do. I had another strategy where I took Ivan out within the first five seconds, but there was it was so hard to pull off. You had to have an immaculate headshot. This way allows us to do it without any fear of anyone seeing us, and we're pretty much clear until the end. You can't normally get through this door, so having Ivan will allow you to get through the door. Once you gain control, immediately go into your camouflage and you want to equip Raiden's face as well as the uniform of the officer. This is the only way you're going to be able to get through the next section. And as far as gameplay wise, this is going to be it for the video. There is a super, super long, awesome cutscene with some really, really cool action and, and whatnot in it. So I definitely recommend you guys staying around if you're enjoying the story. Uh, if you're only here for the gameplay, this is going to be it as far as that goes. There's the Shagohod. We'll be coming in there a little bit later. So hopefully you guys have been enjoying the walkthrough so far. I've really, really taken my time to edit all the cutscenes in and try to make it as neat as possible. Hopefully I've accomplished that mission. But again, I will have a single video on all gameplay after the walkthrough is complete. Thanks for watching, guys, and of course, I will see you next time. Peace out. Sir! Here it is. You can count on me. What about the Philosopher's legacy? I don't know anything about that. What are you... Are you trying to kill me? What's the matter? I know nothing, I swear it. No one but the Colonel knows of the legacy. I see. No, don't! Oh.
Who's there? You're the man from the CIA. What are you doing here? I told you before, didn't I? I'm going to get you out of here. <laughs> A man of honor, just like your commander. But I'm afraid you're too late. Too late? Don't tell me. The Shagahods. <laughs> exactly. The final preparations for Phase 2 are complete. Sokolov, what exactly is Phase 2? To put it in technical terms, it's a composite range extension system for medium-range ballistic missiles. The Shagahod was originally designed as a tank that could launch nuclear missiles from any type of terrain. There was just one problem we couldn't figure out how to solve. The ICBMs we have today are simply too big for the Shagohod to carry. But the military would not hear of it. They demanded a weapon that could launch a nuclear missile directly into the American homeland. That is when I came up with the idea for Phase 2. But there's no way you could load an ICBM onto the Shagahod. So how do you do it? By accelerating the Shagahod itself. Accelerating it? In Phase 2, a rocket booster unit is attached to the frame of the Shagohod. The unit incorporates the same technology used in the Vostok rocket that sent Major Gagarin into space. Using this booster, the Shagohod can achieve a land speed of over 300 miles per hour. That monster can go more than 300 miles per hour? Yes. And from this state of accelerated motion, it launches a nuclear missile. So, the Shagohod acts like the first stage of a rocket. Yes, precisely. The range of the missile launched by the Shagohod thus increases from 2,500 miles to 6,000 miles. 6,000 miles? That's enough to strike anywhere in the United States. Not only that, with the Shagohod, there's no need to construct giant silos like the ones used to house ICBMs. All you need is a runway about three miles in length, or its equivalent. And you can launch a thermonuclear strike against any location in the United States from anywhere in the Soviet Union. It cannot be detected by spy planes or satellites. It's a mobile fortress, capable of deploying in secret and launching its payload at any time. A weapon from hell. A completed prototype now sits in the hangar. At present, it is the only one of its kind. But Volkin is planning to mass-produce them based on that prototype. And deploy them all over the Soviet Union. Yes, and that's not the end of it. He's going to ship them to Eastern Europe, to Asia, to all the countries of the Eastern Bloc. Even worse, he intends to use the Shagohod as bait to foment armed uprisings among dictators, ethnic insurgents, and revolutionary groups throughout the Third World. His funds are nearly limitless. He could start mass production tomorrow if he wanted. The reason that tensions between East and West have settled into a cold war is because each side fears the other's power. Deterrence. The idea of using threats to keep one's enemy in check is the perfect word to sum up this state of affairs. But the Shagohod goes far beyond the level of threat. It will render the concept of deterrence utterly meaningless. If such a weapon is unleashed on the world, it will not be long before all nations are engulfed in conflict. The Cold War will end, and the entire planet will be consumed by the fires of war. Vulcan and the Shagohod will be at the center of it all.
So you see, it's already too late. No, it's not too late. What do you mean? We've still got a chance. All we have to do is destroy the prototype and the whole facility before they can mass produce it. But just tell me what I need to do to destroy this place. <laughs> All right. The liquid fuel used in the rocket engine is stored in a tank. If you can blow it up somehow... Some C3 ought to be enough to blow the entire hangar to smithereens. C3? You mean that cutting-edge plastic explosive? It could be molded into any shape. The bomb of the future. Where can I get it? There was some in the armory here, but it's gone now. It was stolen by a female spy who was here a minute ago. Eva? No, that's not her name. Her name is Tatiana. She made her way in here by becoming Volkin's lover. I thought she was your lover. Mine? Oh, no. She is Volgin's lover. This is my lover. Who are they? My wife and daughter. They're in America. Now I remember. Your family is in the custody of the CIA. How long has Tatiana been here? Only a few weeks. A few days before the Virtuous mission, then. She said that Khrushchev sent her. What did you just give her? All of the experimental data for the Shagohod. Please, it is essential that you destroy the Shagohod. I will, but first I've got to get you to safety. <sighs> no. I'm not going. My mission is to rescue you. Leave me, Sokolov! Khrushchev has abandoned me. I cannot return to my country. I would most certainly be sent to the Gulags. What about the US? Yes, I once thought of that. My family's waiting for me there. But even if I fled to the United States, I would once again find myself creating weapons of mass murder. In the end, it doesn't matter where I go. I am still a weapons scientist. To be honest with you, I'm tired. Every day I help create things that should never be used. Things that should never have existed in the first place. Every day, without sleep. Without a word of praise from others. And my creations do not even benefit mankind. They are merely the tools of politicians. All I wanted to do was build space rockets. But it was not to be. The space race between America and Russia became the prey of politicians. The space race and the arms race are one and the same. Missiles, rockets, what's the difference? Scientists are always being used. Please, watch over my family. Major, what are you doing here? I've been waiting for you in my room. Who are you? 
Don't play dumb with me. If you think you can fool me, you're sorely mistaken. I know the Major better than anyone else. I come here looking for Tatiana, and what should I find? But a greasy freebooter. disguise. It's gonna rub off on you. And then you'll lose sight of who you really are. Stay out of this! See why they call you the boss. What was that? Some kind of judo? No, it's called CQC, a basic form of close quarters combat. He and I developed it together. Splendid. I'll take it from here. Are you going to kill him? Of course. But first. I will make him pay for hurting Ivan. <laughs> 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 